Hello, <clears throat> this is a MacBook Pro from 2021. This MacBook had a technical problem and I want to explain on this MacBook, there are two USB Type-C ports, as you can see here and here. And this rear port stopped working. But thankfully, Apple's design engineers put the input-output USB Thunderbolt ports on a subboard, meaning a smaller logic board that's not attached to the main logic board. This facilitated a very low cost repair at the Apple store in Bellevue Square. Kudos to the polite employees who had a fast turnaround time. And for $112, the cheapest repair the tech had ever heard of, they were able to take my MacBook, replace the IO board and give it back to me with no loss of data. And I am a completely satisfied customer. Kudos to Apple in California for designing this to be easily repairable and kudos to Foxconn or Hanhai Precision in China who manufactured this device. The MacBook features a sleek recycled aluminum unibody design and you can see that it boots up automatically if you open the lid. Now if I take the box I'm going to go ahead and read the specifications while you have a look at this remarkable industrial design. So it has an incredibly thin screen, which you can tell like this, right? This is an LED backlit IPS P3 calibrated screen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mouse over here with this amazing glass trackpad that's enormous and tell it to shut down. And the NVMe drive that's soldered to the logic board in there allows ultra fast IO performance. Now this specific MacBook Pro is a eight gigabyte unified memory that's also soldered to the logic board. That's the DRAM or uh, latest generation RAM. It has a 512 gigabyte SSD this is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. So if I put my hand here and the eighth gen Apple Watch, you can see by comparison, I like clicky keys too. And these butterfly keys give a nice mechanical feedback when you're typing. This has an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. Now that's the Apple M2 Silicon. And we see a feature that they have. If you press buttons on the keyboard while it's open, it'll actually boot up the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and shut it down again. And um, that's in, to enable rapid access. It also has a touch ID here for logging in, kind of like an older iPhone. This has a 13.3 inch diagonal retina LED backlit display with true tone technology with 2560 by 1600 pixels. Those two USB ports that I was talking about are also called uh, Thunderbolt. They support very high bandwidth IO or input output. There's a headphone jack too. This is the only other input on the machine is right here. This is the 1 8 inch stereo headphone jack and it's Dolby Atmos certified and has exceptional audio performance uh, through earbuds or headphones. It has stereo speakers, a touch bar, which is this here, which is useful for editing videos. This touch interactive glass strip here is also an LCD display. It may be um, AMOLED or something. There's a full size backlit magic keyboard. So um, the white uh, letters here glow and you can vary the brightness of the keyboard. It features Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. In the monitor at the top, I don't know if that's easy to see, but there's a small front-facing camera and microphone for doing FaceTime, and it's high definition, which means 1080p. 
It's pre-installed with Mac OS. It weighs, uh, the size and weight are 0.61 by 11.97 um, or 8.36 inches, which is 1.56 by 30.41 by 20.1 centimeter, two four centimeters. It weighs three pounds or 1.4 kilograms and meets Energy Star requirements. It includes a 67 watt USB-C adapter and USB charging cable. So, if you're wondering which specific model this is, this is an A2338. If we look under the back hinge, we can see cooling ports. So inside here are heat sinks. And MacBook Pro, unlike the MacBook Air, has a cooling fan for the M2 chipset. So hot air can be blown out of these ports. And you'll notice, even when I open the hinge here, there's still a gap to allow the hot air out, even when it's all the way open, right? And that's good if you're video editing or playing video games, which is important because Steam is supported on Mac now, and games like CSGO or No Man's Sky, two of my favorites, are supported on MacBooks. The sleek unibody design also features these high quality rubber offset bumpers, which are lower than the bottom to prevent scratching of the aluminum. They use a pentalobe screw set to secure the back plate to the midframe. There's a bunch of very small font writing on here that says it's designed in California and assembled in China. The model is one, two, I think it says three, three, eight. It's rated for 20.3 volts at three amps max, and then has a bunch of other data. It's relatively thin. It feels light for a laptop. It's sturdy, it doesn't twist. If you put it like this, it's a very robust design. And even, even their boxes include a very nice uh, type of paper and a, a, a sleeve, and the adhesive on the sleeve, that wraps around the machine. I mean, this is, Apple really, and it's got all kinds of writing on it here in different languages. Um, Apple really packages, look at the, look at the, um, here's the power brick, but look at how it fits in the case, right? And this, um, this converts, it's a universal, so you can change this part and put any plug for worldwide so it can take anything from 100 to 240 volts at 50 or 60 Hertz and then it converts it to USB-C output at 67 watts or 20 volts at about 3 amps and um, it's got all of its it describes here actually more specifically it makes 20.3 volts at 3.3 amps or 15 volts at 3 amps or 9 volts at 3 amps, or 5.2 volts at 3 amps. So the USB-C interface can actually talk to a device back and forth and determine how much power is being asked for and the voltage. And that's what makes USB-C so interesting is that it's a versatile um, power and data transfer method. Now these pins for the North American NEMA 15R can go in this way, or you can flip it upside down and plug it in this way. It can be plugged into a power strip like this or rotated and plugged in like this. Um, you can actually get an extension cord to pull this off and plug an extension cord in to plug it in further away. But the reason it folds up nice is because it fits beautifully into the inset in this uh, box. And the, the cable was coiled in here, though it's difficult to put back like that. But in terms of fit and finish, um, you may have seen that when you put a MacBook into, into its box, it fits beautifully. It can hardly move at all. And that's important because they're shipped from China.